Hi guys and welcome to Learn Extra Life. Today is Physical Science and my name is Indiana and, Kat, and as you can see I'm back and I've missed you all. Grade 10s, welcome and thank you to Liberty for making this all possible. You guys completely rock. Last week we covered sound with Tracy and tonight our topic is electromagnetic radiation and Tracy will be taking us through it. Tracy, tell, tell us about what we're chatting about. Well, today actually it's a really nice topic. It's one of those topics where it's, you have to bend your head around some interesting concepts like wave nature, particle nature, but then we get to some really practical stuff like sun burn and x-rays and all of that sort of stuff. So it's actually a really nice section. It's just one of those sections where there's a little bit of questions, but lots of theory that you're going to have to learn but I quite like it so yeah well I, I'm, yeah. I'm very excited so guys please only call and send us questions relating to this topic if you stick with us throughout the year we will eventually get around to the section you are having difficulty with next week there will be no live shows because you guys are all going to be on holiday right no one more week but one you know it's time, to... it's, time, it's time to get ready yes. for those holidays you get <laughs> lucky guys I don't get holidays <laughs> so guys the show tonight will start off with a lesson on electromagnetic radiation then after the break we'll be working through an example or two then lastly we'll be tackling your questions on the topic at the end of the show there are lots of ways to get hold of us facebook.com forward slash learn extra at learn extra for Twitter if you're into tweeting because you know I am um, <laughs> so while you guys are watching shoot questions off to us and we'll get around to them in the third part of the show I have a Casio calculator to give away tonight to one of the best posts on Facebook and we will be announcing the winner tomorrow on the page after the break, we'll be back with Tracy. See you now. Hi guys and welcome back to grade 10 and um, learn extra life physical science. I hope that you're all sitting on the edges of your couch and you're waiting for an amazing lesson. Before I start, I just want to let you know of something amazing that's going down later. What's happening is just before the grade 12 show, we will be showing a little viral, a little mini shoot that we shot of um, a boy named Mazoy that lives in Kwakwa in the Free State. He matriculated last year. Um, I was talking to him on the Facebook page exactly like we're talking to you guys. And he used to learn through Facebook, through Mindset, and we started an online conversation and he would help people on the page. And that's when we decided that it would be important to share his story. So what we did is we went to Kwakwa to put it to Chaba and met Mazoy because he got five distinctions guys and 100% for physical science. He did it and you can do it. So please make sure that you are watching. This is the first time it's going to be shown and it's going live just before the grade 12 show. So that should be at about hmm, quarter to six I think. That's when the grade 12 show goes live. So without further ado I think what we're going to do is we're going to go straight to Tracy and I hope you're all super excited about the Mazoy thing happening later because I am ant. I mean Tracy how incredible is that? I think it's amazing and you know he would have only had help for his 11 and 12 year. Exactly. These guys have not and 100%. That's, that's 100 percent for physical science. That's metric. phenomenal. That is just well done. That's 100 percent for both exams. Glad. Yeah, that's I know. Incredible. You know that makes my heart glad and makes me know that I'm not just talking to no. a camera. Exactly. <laughs> well done <laughs> to you. Exactly. No kids like that. They deserve all the credit. That's. But it's hard. Work, but the teachers like too. Said. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Hard work willing to willing to take advantage of the resources in front of them, and that's what it's about. Sometimes you can't keep blaming. Exactly. Circumstances. You just got to grab life by the horns and go for it. You and know? that's exactly so. what he did. Oh, well done. You must actually make a plan to see that. You must. Absolutely. You must. Just for the grade 12 show. Excellent. Good to know. Okay. So let's get out of the lesson. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right. Guys, this is the last lesson on the section wave light. Wave sound and light. Now we've spoken about transverse waves, we spoke about sound, which was your longitudinal waves, and now we're going to a very, 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 very special section, which is transverse wave, which is electromagnetic radiation. Okay? Now, what that means is for electromagnetic radiation, if there are any grade 12s watching, this is currently in your curriculum and has been brought down. So, grade 10s, don't get freaked out if you have friends in grade 12 who do this a little later in the year. That's fine. It's just because there's been a little bit of a changeover, right? This section, to me, is such a nice section because it's a learning section. There's not too many things they can possibly ask you. And we're just taking the stuff you've learned in the past and putting it into a specific 
context. But why do we need to look at electromagnetic radiation in the first place? Because that seems, well, there's this huge section just on electromagnetic radiation. Well, the first reason is because it is a huge spectrum. Visible light and all the beautiful colors of the rainbow and all of those things we see is just a very, very small section of the electromagnetic radiation. And in fact, Visible light is created in exactly the same way as things like radio waves, which you need in order to be watching this broadcast. Gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet light, infrared, all of those things fit into the spectrum. And they affect our lives, whether we can see it or not. And we've got to be aware of that. Secondly, electromagnetic radiation is considered to have what we call a maximum speed limit. Now you've seen that before because we have dealt with this value. It's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The current theory is that nothing can go faster than that. And in fact CERN in Switzerland tried to do experimentation to prove that you could actually have objects moving faster than that and they have now gone back on it because they realized there was problems with their um, the equipment and they hadn't quite set everything upright so that we're getting incorrect readings and that's a big thing for to realize but three times ten to the eight in fact with Einstein's theory equals mc squared it's an equation you see all the time it's that speed limit is where matter and energy sort of cross a boundary where matter can become energy and energy can become matter and that just is a little out there so we're just going to put that on a back burner realize nothing goes faster than the speed of light speed of electromagnetic radiation which is a good thing for you to remember when you're doing problems in any section if you get a speed bigger than three times ten to the eight you've made a mistake third thing is electromagnetic radiation and we're going to put these together have two very important things. They have a wave-like nature and they have a particle-like nature. This is what I need you to keep in mind as we do this, Great Tens. We are teaching you models to help explain the world around you. Not everything can be explained 100% to your satisfaction because this debate between wave and particle nature has been going on for hundreds of years and for a long time especially in the 17 and 1800s the scientists who had the most clout or came from the richest family or had, knew the best people to know his was the theory that would be accepted for no other reason than because he could pay the right people okay nowadays we've come to a conclusion that it has both Einstein first put it all together and a, and a German man by the name of Max Planck. We're going to look at this a little bit later on and explain to you the difference between the two. The next thing, electromagnetic radiation does not need a medium. It's like, well you all know light doesn't because light comes from the sun and we're very grateful it doesn't need a medium otherwise we would live on a dark planet because of our space which is empty okay none of the electromagnetic radiation needs a medium so it doesn't need air it doesn't need solids liquids doesn't need that but the medium does affect its speed and does affect how it moves okay but it doesn't affect the actual radiation all right so that means we can move on and what we let me just move this onto the other side so it's easier all right what we're going to look at now is its wave-like nature and I'm afraid Indy's gonna have to come and help me again just because it's so much fun working with her. Okay. Now, Am I sneaking over? Yeah, sneak over for me. So Indy's gonna come over this side for me. Okay. No, she's gonna face that way. Oh, that Sorry. way. Okay. She's like okay, one of my kids. Tracy. Okay. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> there we go. Now, what Indy's gonna do, Indy's hand is a particle. It's a charged particle like a proton or electron in the sun that's vibrating so it's got energy okay so yeah it's, it's very it's exciting no, it's <laughs> busy with the great tens. and because it's got energy it's going to move backwards and forwards now this backwards and forwards motion you see i've practiced this eh? i know we had to make sure creates a electric field because it's a charge that's moving and that electric field goes backwards and forwards like a normal transverse wave but at, you can stop now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. At the same time, though, 
scientists have realized there's a relationship between electric fields and magnetic fields. So when we have moving electric charges, they also create a magnetic field. So while our charge moves backwards and forwards, at the same time, at the same time, the electric field does this, goes up and goes down, goes up and goes down. So now what's actually happening? Now Indy's gonna do this with her hand for me. Oh, We've got to do it together, Indy. Okay. Because okay. they've got to be in phase, okay? Okay. So start in the middle. Okay. Okay. So she goes up and then we go down together and then we go up together when we go down together. Oh. So what's actually happening is we have two transverse waves happening at exactly the same time. They reach rest at the same time, they reach crest at the same time, they just at 90 degrees to each other. So if you guys are in a study group, please go and, and get the two of you, do yeah. it together. Because yeah. I realized I'm a little yeah. spastically and challenged. Then, yes. so, <laughs> I think we both are, we did it well. Oh, we did it well. Andy. Such okay. a pleasure. Ooh, okay, let's don't, get... don't you trip. No, let's be careful. All right. Okay, guys. Thank you, Indy. <laughs> Such a Wait. pleasure. Don't trip on her. So, <laughs> point is, I'm not even going to try and draw this for you guys because it's just not even worth my artistic non-existent talent. But the point is, we get two waves that are at right angles to each other. That is what makes this wave so, so, so special. Okay, and it's elect, and we call it an electromagnetic wave because we have an electric field and a magnetic field moving. So it's actually really, really nice. What does that mean for us, though? This wave equation. Ooh, maybe there we go. Or not. In. You've seen that one before. V equals F lambda. We did that for transverse waves. We used exactly the same equation when we were looking at sound and light. It hasn't changed. We're just now going to change V for C. C is a constant. It's the speed of electromagnetic radiation or the speed of light. 3 times 10 to the 8. Okay. Now, what I need you to get in your heads here, please, guys, is we often refer to this as the speed of light, but it refers to the speed of any electromagnetic radiation, okay? Not just light, any side of the spectrum. We're gonna look at the spectrum in a second. So any part of the spectrum, whether it be our really, really long waves, which are, which are radio waves, or our very, very short waves, which are gamma waves, it doesn't matter. Now I'm hoping someone's going, hang on, wait. I've got two waves moving simultaneously, but there's only one wavelength and one frequency. That's because these two waves are completely and 100% in sync with each other. They will reach rest positions at the same time, okay? They will have the same distance between successive points in phase, which means they then also have the same frequency. So we don't need to know exactly where they're going. And if we did, wow, the maths would be absolutely hideous. But luckily for us, we don't need to worry about that. So F and lambda being the ones we usually know where F is frequency, don't forget, measured with a, not with a G, with the Q, frequency, which is measured in Hertz, and lambda is your wavelength, measured in meters. Now, what's going to happen with this section is the frequencies are going to be very big. So we, we've actually got a question a little bit later on where we have to use a conversion and your wavelengths are going to generally be very small. So this is my challenge to you as something you should do on your own and you can get it in the, on the Everything Science in the textbook is you need to get a list of the prefixes we can use like nano, pico, micro, milli, all of those because if you don't know those then these questions become very very difficult and it's a silly thing to lose marks on. Okay, now what that means if it moves on is we get to our spectrum. Now the electromagnetic spectrum, let's put it up a little bit, is such an important part of where we're going. It's Google a nice one. Indy, can we find one to put on Facebook? Of course, I'll, I will Google one right now. That'll be great. What you need to understand here with the spectrum, guys, is that in this particular one that we have here is, and this is taken from the Everything um, Science Free High School textbook, is it's got a set of values for frequency it's got a set of values for wavelength, 
but they are approximates. When we come to this part, there's, it's not a case of, well, as soon as I get to, and they say 10 to the 10 meters for, for radio, it's definitely a microwave. No, it's not. There's, there's still a lot of debate around what happens at our, at our phases. So they sort of just smush into each other, but you do need to know the spectrum. This is not an option here, grade 10s, okay? Okay, so just very briefly, because we need to go to, to, to a bit of a break, is we have seven parts, just like seven parts of light, which is great. Radio, microwave, microwave infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma rays. Why I like this diagram is it shows you that it goes from a long wavelength to a short wavelength, which means it's going from a low frequency to a high frequency, okay? And it's these, right, this part of the spectrum that does all the damage, right, that are very, very dangerous for us. Radio waves, yeah, not so much. We're very grateful for them. Microwaves are about the size of an ant, okay? So they're still very tiny. Um, getting even smaller, radio waves can be as big as buildings in terms of their, their, wa their wavelength, which is really nice. Infrared, I have a needle type thing, then we start getting to really, really tiny things which you can't see because they are so very, very small. High, high frequency though, okay? And in the middle, our color spectrum, which goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. You'll eventually learn those. Okay, visible spectrum. Visible, we only call it the visible spectrum because this is the one I can perceive, I can see, okay? I cannot see the rest. Don't care what your friends tell you, only Superman can see, has x-ray vision, the rest of us don't, okay? And you can't see the rest because it's on either end of the spectrum, all right? So, I'm going to give you a short break to digest what we've just done, and then we're going to do a question after that. Indy? Fantastic. Okay, guys, let's take a little break. What I will do is I will find one of those, um, well, find something on Google <laughs> and put it on. I might, might not be the exact same one, but it'll be pretty similar. I'll get Tracy to check it during the break. Okay, guys, let's go to a quick break. Don't leave those seats. We'll be back now with that challenge question. Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live. You're watching Grade 10 Physical Science and I hope that you're having a cracking time. Okay guys, I just want to say a big what's up to Kashifa and Benele and Prudy and Tumelo, all of you guys. I've missed you guys lots and lots and I hope that you're paying attention in this lesson and don't forget that we've got this awesome Casio calculator to give away during the lesson to the best post on the Facebook page. Chat to me on facebook.com forward slash learn extra, also at learn extra and a Big up to Liberty for making this awesome show possible. So without further ado, let's give it straight back to the teacher herself. Tracy, take it away. Thank you, Indy. Such a pleasure. Okay. Um, Indy's actually found a really nice image. It looks, very, it looks slightly different to the one I had. It just doesn't have all the pictures on, but it's got all the values and stuff you need. And it's got, the, it's got a nice spread for you, because it's actually quite an important one, which actually comes to the first example I wanted to do with you, which says, and a lot of these are, are questions where you have to just write things down. Unfortunately, this section does have calculations, but not that many. And this one says, list, and we're going to get out the important words here, list the main types of electromagnetic radiation. So only the seven we've looked at. But now look at how they want it listed. It says, in order of increasing wavelength. That is really important, because if we go back to my diagram, this diagram is actually, this is in order of increasing frequency. Okay, increasing frequency means I'm going from a low frequency, you can see because they're quite wide, to a high frequency, they're very small. So be careful with a question like this, because you might get all seven of these correct, but you put them in the wrong order and then you don't get your marks and that seems like a bit of a silly thing to do. So you need to make sure in your head that even if somewhere in the back of your head you've realized radio waves are our longest waves, gamma rays are our shortest waves. Now, how do we remember this? Radio waves 
their main use is to broadcast radio and television. Now, could you imagine if these were tiny little waves and now uh, we film a uh, show in Randburg, in Joburg, but now you're watching in Cape Town. If the radio waves were very short, the trees and the hills and the mountains and the buildings would absorb that radio wave and you would never get it, okay? So we need long radio waves so that we can get our radio signals and our broadcast signals over long distances. Gamma rays are dangerous and they come from nuclear reactions essentially because they're inside the atomic nuclei. So that means we don't want them to go very far at all if we want them at all. So gamma rays must be short because they, they got, we don't want them to last long, all right? So when it comes to this question, how do we write this? Do we want it in order of increasing wavelength? So we would write it as, well, we'd start, we'd, I just said that to you, gamma rays, okay? Because those are our smallest. Gamma rays, okay, don't just write gamma, all right? Then we had x-rays which I personally am very grateful that we actually do exist. Then we have ultraviolet. Which I'm sure some of you have experienced at some stage. Ultraviolet light is also known as black light sometimes in um, media and theatrical circles. It's known as black light. That's that light that makes white things glow. All right, that's ultraviolet. Then we get our visible light. After visible light, we have infrared. And, ooh, maybe I should make it so that you can actually read it. Then we have microwaves. It's another thing I'm quite grateful for. Microwave food. Okay. I think I'd be lost without it. And lastly, we have gamma. I started with gamma rays. My goodness. Lastly, we have radio waves. Now, if I had asked you to do the exact same list, but in order of increasing frequency, I would have written it the other way around. So this is just a, this is a reading thing. This isn't actually whether you know it, it's whether you read the question. Okay? Then, I have another one. List the main use of, and that should say, say, that say radio waves, apparently I can't type either, infrared, gamma, and x-rays, okay? Radio waves, well, we've been talking about this a lot. You're telling me at the moment, I'm sure you're all busy screaming at the TV going, oh, we know what those are. Oh, maybe I should get the dirty pink. Radio, television. Okay, nice and easy, easy ones. Infrared is a little less everyday-ish, okay? But infrared is used for night vision, okay? Now this, if you watch some TV programs, I'm sure you've seen they put those little goggles on and then they see infrared measures heat, all right? So when you look at those infrared night vision goggles, what they're actually measuring is the heat coming off a body. So and it comes out in different colors, and that's what the infrared is, because you give off, as a human that's breathing and alive, you give infrared radiation off all the time. We just can't see it with our naked eye. Gamma rays, these actually have a great use, and we're very grateful, because they kill bacteria, and they sterilize. Uh, let me spell it right for you. Mm -hmm. And they used to sterilize medical equipment, which is great because if they're not sterilized in a solution, it's sterilized through gamma rays and it kills everything. So we really, really like that. And then x-rays we know are used for bone imaging. And last year, I had to have some x-rays done of my knee because I tore the cartilage. I was very grateful for x-rays because then it could tell my doctor exactly what needed to happen and where to fix me and that sort of stuff, which was great. So x-rays are very, very useful. 
and I'm sure I said I have said this to you guys in the past, X-rays were actually discovered by accident, unfortunately, by really? Marie Curie. Yeah, and then they died of radiation poisoning because you can't actually you can't actually be in X-rays for a long period of time. Which is why, if any of you had X-rays, they'll ask you if you're pregnant. Very bad for babies, and. The woman or the man, the technician who takes your x-rays, he'll set you up in the little room and then he leaves. Makes you feel a little disconcerting. But he leaves because he goes and stands behind in an iron shielded room so that he's not constantly or she's not constantly exposed to radiation, which is great. Yeah. And indeed, that brings us to a nice place for a short break. It we'll does indeed. So, guys, make sure that you get your questions in on the page if there's anything that you aren't understanding because we are going through questions in the last um, 15 minutes of the show. So what we're going to do is take a quick break, go get a cup of water, a cup of tea. I think I wouldn't mind getting a cup of tea. See you now, after the break. Hi guys and welcome back to Grade 10 Learn Extra Live. I'm Indiana and you are joining us with Tracy today just in case you have been missing out. Um, Mbuso, so glad that you're joining in. Snazo, so, so glad you're joining in too. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to get straight back to Tracy and let her take over the lesson. Tracy, take it over. Thanks Indiana. You can see I, lo I love this section. Okay. We want to talk about one important thing about electromagnetic radi radiation even with its wave-like nature at the moment. Ultraviolet radiation, this penetrating ab ability, this is extremely dangerous for us, okay? When we look at ultraviolet radiation, there's actually three types. We don't worry about UVC because it sort of gets absorbed right at the top We're not, before it gets to our atmosphere, but the two important ones are UVA and UVB. Now, UVB theoretically should be absorbed by the ozone layer. Now this is one of the issues around global warming. So great tens, this is a big up for you guys to be paying attention to this because this becomes a nice place where your teachers can start including environmental questions, contextual questions, whether you understand how science affects things around you other than just your science mark at school. UVB should be absorbed by the ozone layer. With the hole in the ozone, that's a bit iffy and then the UVA comes all the way through. But remember, why is this important for us? UVA, okay, contributes to skin aging. So if you spend a lot of time in the sun, people who tend to spend too much time in the sun, they, 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 their skin goes leathery and it ages really quickly. That's because of UVA, okay? It can do DNA damage. It is extremely dangerous and definitely cause skin cancer. UVB is just as bad, okay? In fact, UVB is far more dangerous, which is why you should be wearing sunblock, regardless of your pigment, okay? So it doesn't matter if you as white as I am, okay? Just because I'm very pale doesn't mean I should wear more sunblock, okay? I'm just more aware of it, I think, but I've also been burnt more than enough times in my life to know, what, to know better. But sunblock is extremely important, regardless of your natural pigment. If you do want to tan, which I can understand, you need to do it in very short increments. Still using a sunblock, a good quality sunblock, and do it in short periods of time. Because if you do it too quickly, you burn, and that's where you start doing damage, okay? And you guys are, you guys are very, very young. Don't damage your skin before you need to at all. And then I have a nice picture just to show you what x-rays are used for. Okay, so we've got x-rays which then go into, this one's a nice one because it's shown some hands and we, okay, and then cell phones and microwave radiation is also quite a problem for us. This, this is a bit debatable, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because cell phones, cell phones and stuff also debate whether it messes with your head and all sorts of things, you're not going to spend too much time on it. Okay. Okay, um, we're not going to explain why we need to protect ourselves and we just spoke about that, so. Okay, okay, okay. Particle nature, now, all right. Particle nature. Everything we've discussed so far is wave nature, okay. Now we need to do particle nature. 
Where, what do you want to, con how do I describe this to you? If you take a little squash ball and we throw it against the wall, it goes against the wall, comes back, gets reflected, that is what makes it look like a wave, but it's also a particle and lights like that. There are times when it behaves like a wave and we're very excited about that and then there are times when it doesn't because it reflects off a wall and it has this particle nature. Now we specifically want to look at the concept of a photon. Now this is a brand new word for you guys, okay? It's a photon and I'm sure you've heard this before where people talk about a photon of light, they talk about a photon of energy, all of that sort of thing. And what is a photon? A photon is a quantum, which means an energy packet of light. Now what they've done is, what they say to us is that light behaves as a wave, but that wave has energy that then allows it to behave like a particle, okay? But that energy is in a packet, it is specific. So it's not just a random value, it's not just some, oof, sounds like a good idea, not at all, it's very specific. And light, it's nice with um, colored light because it's easy to see, but it comes in very specific packets of energy. Where does this energy come from? New equation. Now, if the R grade 12 is watching, the, the current curriculum you guys are going to get here, and this is the first one, equals HF. H is known as Planck's constant. It will be given to you in your exam. All right, it is a given constant. It is extremely tiny, 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Okay, it's named after a German man by the name of Max Planck. This was really only sort of put into finalized, everyone agreed on it around the 1930s, 1940s. He was a contemporary of Albert Einstein, okay? He was a German scientist, he did incredible work for us. Now, he realized that the energy of a photon or the energy of a particle of electromagnetic radiation is his constant times the frequency. Now that frequency, that constant comes from experimentation. Guys, this wasn't just a random, mm, sounds like a good number. This is thousands of experiments being done over and over and over again, okay? But we remember that not, we're not always gonna describe our waves in terms of frequency. So if we go back to the fact that we know Oh, I don't know what happened there. Let's undo that because I don't want a big yellow piece there. Okay, let's go back. Okay, I have a big yellow thing in the middle. C equals F lambda. Okay, so from that equation we realize that frequency is C divided by lambda. So, and C just being the special speed of light which is three times 10 to the eight. I put it into my equation and I get my second equation, which is quite nice to use. I'm still not, I don't think they've really finalized what's gonna go onto your information sheets, but you'll probably get this equation, e equals hf, but you do need to learn e equals hc over lambda as well. If you don't, it's okay, because it's a combination of those two, so don't stress too much about that, okay? Okay, now, before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with this question. What is the energy of EM, ra EM radiation with a frequency of 3 times 10 to the 8? Okay, I'm going to leave that with you. We're going to take a short break, and then when we come back, we'll do a couple more questions with you, okay? So we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Hi guys and welcome back to Mindset Learn. Um, this is the last 15 minutes of the show so get those questions in. Don't forget that we will be taking them and if there's anything that you are struggling with, write those down. And without further ado, I think we're going to get straight back to Tracy. Um, let's learn more and let's learn extra guys. Thanks Indy. Okay, so before the break I gave you this little bit of a question and I asked you what is the energy? So let's think about what they want. They want energy of EM radiation with a frequency of 3 times 10 to the 8 hertz. Now they want E, alright, 
and they've given you frequency is three times ten to the eight hertz. And I'm pretty sure some of you are going, but I don't have enough information. Of course you do. All right. This is one of those questions where they start to expect you to know that that means I'm going to have to use H. 6 comma 6, 3 times 10 to the minus 34. So looking at that information, we absolutely can do this. That's straight substitution. My suggestion, grade teens, is you learn how to put your calculators onto scientific notation because if you don't, you really struggle with inputting the 3 times 10 to the 8 and the 6 comma 6, 3 times 10 to the minus 34. And if you put those in wrong, often your answers are a factor of about 100 or 1,000 out at the end, and then it's still wrong. And then that breaks my heart because I know Ooh. it's an issue and I'm in the dark. Oh, and we're back, so I'm just going to carry on. That was interesting. No one panic here. No, nope. we're <laughs> a small power failure. It's fine. We're very grateful for the electromagnetic spectrum. And there we go. And now we get a nice answer of 1, 9 times 10 to the minus 25. And we're in the dark again. Okay, <laughs> what that you means. You just carry on. I we'll don't even, I don't even know if we can, can even see us. Okay, oh. keep teaching. Everyone can still see the TV screen. Brilliant. Oh, okay. yeah. Guys, what that gives us is 1, 99 times 10 to the minus 25, and I'm pretty sure you'll go, that's a ridiculous answer. It is. It's very, very tiny, but we are talking about a relatively small wave at this point in time, so that's perfectly acceptable. I think because of our current situation, we'll go into the next question. Oh, no, there we go. We seem to be... Uh, okay, yes. so... <laughs> brilliant. Okay, so now I'm just going to do one more question because I'm sure there's some others coming. Energy of light again... Oh, but look at the difference here, guys. 660 nanometers. I did this deliberately. E is what they're looking for. Wavelength is six. 160 nanometers. Now, right at the beginning of the show, I told you that you've got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to learn your prefixes and how to change them. This is nanometers. You can see this often. This is the same as 660 times 10 to the minus 9. Light is always in the spectrum, okay? So this is visible light. I'm not really sure what color it is, but it's visible light, okay? That means I'm going to need to use C. Okay, so equation e equals HC over lambda. Okay, straight substitution. As much as we hate these numbers, and I know how you all feel, I always run out of space. Okay, and 3 times 10 to 8, and alrighty, and then we get, ooh, also small numbers, grade 10s, please be paying attention to this. Your frequencies will generally be very large. 10 to the 8, 10 to the 12, that sort of value. Your wavelengths will be very small generally, and the energy is very, very small. Planck's constant is responsible for that, but the energy is tiny. This isn't the type of energy you can experience at all. But what this does explain to us, though, is you've all sat out in the sun and gone, oh, I'm so hot, because you're actually absorbing the energy from the electromagnetic spectrum, from the photons that are hitting you. It's from that. So I do have another question, but do you have some for me, Indiana? Um, let's have a look. Wendy has asked, is the mm. frequency equal to photon? No. A photon is a way, the frequency is related to its wave, okay, to its way, to its how fast it moves. A photon is just a packet of energy. So it's just one little packet that then moves like a wave, but it's not the same thing at all. No. And Boy Pelo wants to know, how do you calculate the wavelength of a photon? 
that would depend on what you're given. If you're given the energy of the light, so if we, let's go to a blank page, well, wrong way. So, ooh, okay, let's do it at the bottom of this one. So if you're given, if you're actually given E as a value, let's, I, can't, I don't have a calculator with me, so I can't, I'm not gonna make one up in my head. But if you're given that value, H is a constant, so it becomes a manipulation of E equals HF. It's just a manipulation of that equation. Yep. Okay, that's amazing. Let me see what else. Um, I know Aura Bile said he's just joined in and he's finding this channel very helpful and that's exactly Excellent. what he wanted to do. Um, let me have a look. What causes refraction and defraction of a water wave? I think that's a bit, that's off a bit of the topic, right? Yeah, yeah. though it's not a bad thing. Um, that's just the bending around a boundary uh, for diffraction, which you don't need to know in grade 10, but refraction is when it goes from a different medium. Those properties of diffraction and re refraction are why we think electromagnetic radiation is a wave as well, because it behaves, it can be diffracted and it can be refracted. That's not technically part of the curriculum anymore, but if your teacher's done it, it's just for completion, and I think it's actually a really good idea because it just gives you a, a much rounder view of what's going on with waves. So it's not a bad question. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and then Liz, um, Lechu wants to know, what is the easiest way to remember the wave's order? If there is an easy way. That's a good question. I, yeah, I, she's looking for yeah. like a mnemonic or something, yes, which is not yeah. something I know. Um, I think it's something she's going to have to make up for herself. Generally speaking, in any diagrams you get, they're always drawn from radio to gamma. So it's generally always drawn from long wavelength to short wavelength. And then, yeah, I can't think of an easy, easier way. I think it just comes from learning it like a parrot. Well, there you go. Okay, Kashifa's yeah. got quite a cool one. Yeah. This is Kashifa's one. Are waves responsible for carrying sound through a telephone, landline, and or cell phone? And if so, does that mean they are faster than radio TV waves? Because I have noticed... Um, I have noticed that, for example, yesterday when you all had your live phone call, on the phone you hear the voice first and then you hear it on TV. Okay. I remember that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's actually happening between the TV and the phone is you, when we film, our signal has to go through to a main sort of um, control room. That signal is then passed on to... Uh, the p people who then s send it off to everyone. So that's why there's the delay. Nowadays, we're now using fiber optics and light for phone calls, for our cables. So s phone calls are much faster, but they're not using sound anymore. They're using fiber optics, which is actually using electromagnetic radiation as it goes through. So your fiber optic cables are much clearer when we look at modems all of that sort of stuff the old sort of stuff if you had an analog it took forever but if you have a digital it's much much quicker it's also what they change into when we have to go through to digital tv we're actually changing the formatting of the waves to make it um not so reliant on radio waves because radio waves can be a bit iffy and they get absorbed by all sorts of things and it's to make the signal clearer hmm. yeah um Busso wants to know do um can gamma rays affect people Absolutely. Gamma rays can kill you. Gamma rays are part of what they use in some cancer treatment for radiation treatment because gamma rays actually destroy cells. It's also why a lot of people who are going through radiation treatment tend to get very, very sick because it kills the good, the bad and the ugly. All right. Gamma rays are extremely dangerous. They will eat away flesh. They will completely destroy you. They're very, very dangerous. You want to stick, around, you stick away from those. Absolutely. Okay. Um, there is another one. Let's have a look here. Oh, I feel like I've got hiccups, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Where does particle and wave-like nature differ, the main difference between the two? Okay. Your main difference is wave nature. Okay, it's, it's in the particle nature. Particle nature means that light is able to do things that waves can't. For example, you're going to learn later on about a concept called the photoelectric effect, where literally waves of light will come onto a metal surface and they can hit electrons off that metal surface. They can cause the electrons to move, which is what we use in solar panels. Okay? 
If light was just a wave, that wouldn't happen because the energy contained in the wave would have to do with the amplitude of the wave. And through experimentation, people realized that even if you made the wave, the light very, very bright, I mean, even brighter than the studio lights, it didn't do anything. But if we change frequency of the light, then we can change the energy. So it really comes down to penetrating ability. So gamma rays definitely act more like particles and radio waves do and the ability to knock electrons and small particles out of metals that's what makes it that's the biggest difference the wave waves also can be diffracted particles can't so a wave going through can bend round corners a particle will get to a corner and just stop Okay, it's not going to bend around the corner or, or it'll just go straight. So those are your biggest ones, the knocking off and diffraction. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Um, from Trish, what is the frequency of gamma ray with photon that has a wavelength? Oh, okay, that's, a, that's an actual question. I don't think we have time for that. <laughs> um, perhaps maybe... I can, we can start it off for her. We can start okay. off in this. Okay. If you give me the information, I can show her where to go. Okay, what is the frequency of gamma ray with photon that has a wavelength of, I think it's 4 star 10? Okay, so the it's expon The exponent of the negative is 12m. Okay, so they want the frequency, okay? What's the frequency of the photon? And they tell you the wavelength is? 410. 4 com I four think it's 4 with a little star, 10. I don't know what it's... 4 times 10, yeah? And the exponent of the negative is 12m. Okay, that's actually not as hard as it looks because what this really means is if you want frequency, this is the same as any of the other questions we did with this, they just, they just used the word photon in it. So remember, c equals f lambda, where c is 3 times 10 to the 8. They're telling you they want frequency. Your wavelength is 4 times 10 to to the minus 12. Now that gives me, I'm going to do this in my head and hopefully not get it wrong, to the 20. I'm just going to quickly steal my calculator, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. It should give us, ooh, okay, this calculator is on a different mode, so I'm afraid, there we go. So it's through, no, I'm afraid they're going to have to believe me on this. The math might not be 100% correct, but I divide it by both sides. But I think we've almost run out of time. We have run out of time. Guys, thank you so much for a fantastic lesson. Grade 10s, grade 11s, don't forget that you are on next. Grade 12, just before the grade 12 show, we will be showing I'm a Mindsetter. Watch to see Mazoy's story. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be inspirational. And it's coming to you in screens just before the grade 12 show. Goodbye, grade 10s. See you soon, grade 11s. And bye from me for now.